Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. We want to improve our vocabulary and we do so by learning few few new words every day. Today is our day number 16. Let's get going then. The very first thing, the very first word that we want to learn is Canote. Co note. What does it mean to canote? Sometimes you hear people talk about this word, it connotes this or it connotes that. What does it mean? It simply means to suggest. Connote means to suggest or to imply more to the meaning. of a word then simply then just it's literal meaning to suggest or to imply more to the meaning of a word than just a simpler than than just is literal meaning. Sometimes literally the words have certain meaning which are very limited but uh, the word somehow suggests or implies something more than that and that is to connote something. To, to connote another shade or another meaning or uh, to imply another meaning. The noun of course would be connotation and most, of, most people have heard of this word for some strange reason this word does not appear very often. People hear about a word having a positive connotation or negative connotation. It simply means that it connotes either, it simply means that it implies, in addition to its literal meaning, it implies something more than that, either something positive or something negative. Hence, a positive connotation or a negative connotation. So, connotation, again, con o t -tion is a noun which, 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 which means simply a secondary a secondary meaning a secondary meaning suggested or implied by a word in addition to its literal meaning. I think I'm going to retire this marker because it's not very dark. Excuse me just one second. Let's see if I can find another black marker someplace. Oh boy, where did I put them? Oh, this is not a good time to look for it. Anyway, I had a whole bunch of them. Oh, there they are. Sometimes things are in plain sight, but that is precisely why they become invisible. Let's see if this is any better. Anyway, so that's what connotation means. Connotation means it's a noun, it means a secondary meaning suggested or implied by a word in addition to its literal meaning. Let me give an example. For example, for example, we're going to learn four words of just now. All of these four words that I'm going to put on the blackboard. One, two, three, four. All of these four words. Card. 
stars succinct and finally laconic all of these four words simply mean to be brief they all mean to be brief but they have different connotation they connote something in addition to just simply being brief in addition to simply being brief they suggest or imply more to the meaning than, than just simply being brief so we're going to learn these four words and in the process we'll begin to appreciate the meaning of the word connotations uh, the, these words these four words as I just said carry different connotations so let's talk about all of these four words one by one but that was it for connote and connotation we're going to talk about these four words now So, what does it mean to be, what does it mean to, to be curved? It's a very simple pronunciation, just the way it's written. Adjective. As, as I already told you, the all four of all four of those words mean to be brief. To, to be brief. But in addition to just simply being brief, which is the literal meaning of the word, it suggests or it connotes, being curt, connotes that the person in addition to being brief is also being, to be brief, in a rude way. Hence, I'm going to use the word now, hence the connotation of rudeness. The word curt has a connotation of rudeness. Let's go to the next one then. Also means to be brief. And it may or may it may be rude but not necessarily so to be brief. in a rude manner like just like this one but not always not necessarily so or even if it is for some strange reason it is not as uh, not as it doesn't carry as much of a negative connotation as the first word does let's see if I can put a demarcation between these two words so that it's easier for you to see. There you go. Let's go to the next one. The next one is succinct. Let's talk about that. Succinct. Succinct. What does it mean to be succinct? Again, it means to be brief. Be brief. They all, they all mean to be brief. And clear. This is a good quality to have. This is a virtue, as opposed to these two are wise. And if you do not know these words, I do not know exactly which day we covered, but we did cover these two words, virtue and vice. Virtue is a good quality, is a good moral quality, and vice is a, is a negative quality. So to be succinct is a virtue, because you're being brief, which is a good thing, a lot of the time, and at the same time you're being clear. To be brief is one thing. If I ask a question and you give me a very, very brief answer, you were not rude, you were not curt, you were not uh, terse, you were not any way rude at all. You just gave me a brief answer, but I have no idea what you just said. That is not being succinct. That is not good quality. You're just being brief. But if you're being succinct, what it is is that not only you're being rude, uh, not only you're being brief, you're not being rude, and in addition to, in, at the same time when you're being brief, you're being brief in such a way that I still understand what you're talking about, which is a very good quality to have to be succinct. What if you're just being brief? 
But if you just if a person is just being brief, the person is not being rude. They, they do not have a rude tone in their voice. They are not being. They are also not being very clear. We do not understand what they are talking about. It's not that they are rude. You don't understand what they're talking about. So they're not. They're not being clear. They're also not being rude. They're just being brief. Is there a word for that? The word for that would be this, right here. Laconic. Laconic simply means. It simply means to be brief, that's all. It has no connotation of uh, being rude or, or being clear. It has no connotation whatsoever. It's a neutral word. It just means to be brief, that's it. That's it. So now we understand the meaning of the word connotation. What it, what we understand what it means to connote a certain uh, shades in the meanings of the word. Some words have positive connotations, some words have negative connotations. And some words are just neutral, they have neither positive connotation nor negative connotation. While we are at it, since we use the word brief so many times, right here, while we are at it, let's learn, let's learn the noun of brief. I need to raise all of the things because I need the room, but we are done with these four words. Question is, what is the noun of brief? For example, Brief is an adjective, uh, for example, the noun of clever is cleverness, noun of, uh, noun of uh, brave is bravery. What's the noun of brief? The noun of brief, contrary to what sometimes you might hear from some people, it is not briefness. The noun of brief is not briefness. The noun of brief is... Gravity, as it is pronounced, gravity. I figured I'll cover this because we're talking about briefs. We mentioned the word brief so many times. Next question. Next question. What is the antonym of gravity? If brevity means to be brief, to have the quality of being brief, that is, what is the antonym of it? If this means, if brevity means quality of, of being brief or quality of using too few words, this word, the antonym, must mean a quality of being too wordy or employing too many words. And the word for that is, the antonym of brevity is, Technically speaking, technically speaking, verbose is not the antonym of brevity because verbose is an adjective. Brevity is a noun. The noun for verbose is Verbosity. There you go. Gravity and verbosity. This is a noun. Gravity was a noun. That's it. So what did we learn today? We learned the word connote and from the word connote we have the noun connotation. We talk about positive connotation and negative connotation of the word and we use an example to understand this concept of what does it mean to connote something. For these four words, curt, terse, uh, succinct, and laconic. To be curt or to be terse means to be rude, but to be to be brief rather 
in a rude manner. To be curt or to be terse means to be brief in a rude manner. You have this edge to your tone. You're being uh, too, 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 too sharp. It, there's, a, there's a rude tone to your, uh, to your voice. At the same time, if you're being succinct, that means that you're being brief and you're being clear and there is no rudeness in it, which is a very good quality to have, to be succinct. Laconic is just a neutral word, it just means to be brief, that's it. It's neither positive nor negative, it doesn't have a connotation of being clear, it doesn't have a connotation, it doesn't have any connotation, it just means to be brief. And since we were talking about the word brief, why not learn the noun of brief? The noun of brief is not briefness, but rather brevity. Brevity is the noun of brief, and the antonym of brevity is verbosity, which simply means, oh, I never told you, I never wrote down what it means actually. Verbosity simply means using too many words. Verbose means using too many words. Which makes sense because we're talking about the antonym. Brief means to use too few words, obviously. That's it. That was the end of today. I hope uh, you find these lessons helpful. If you get in the habit of uh, learning few words every day, you will see that over time, your vocabulary will begin to improve. It will, it will enlarge, it will expand. And that's how you do it. You don't try to, don't try to memorize 30, 40, 50 words in a day or you know, sit there at a, a book containing 500 words I'm going to learn this thing a month, month, one month before the exam. It's not going to happen. You have to do it over a long time period, over many, many weeks. So if you do that a few, day, a few words every day uh, on a sustained level, uh, you will see an improvement in your vocabulary. But you have to master them. You have to learn them properly. Master them so well that you begin to use them in your own, own writing. You begin to use them in your own speech. And you begin to notice them in your reading and, or, or in your listening. You say, aha, I know this word. Or you don't have to do the aha part, you understand? That, that's optional. Anyway, if you wish to get hold of me, for personal private tutoring, I tutor for all of these exams that you see here. Prep for GRE.com, prep for GMAT.com, prep for SAD.com, or prep for TOEFL.com. You can go to any of these website addresses and send me an email, and I'll be more than happy, more than happy to help you if you need help uh, in your preparation for these, these tests. Or you can simply go to KeshwaniPrep.com and send me an email from there. I do private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring. I also tutor over the Skype on the internet. And of course, I also help over the telephone. Just send me an email if there's anything that, that I can do to help you. Okay, thanks.